is Social Security in Action. Produced in Hollywood for the United States Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. And here is the manager of the Hollywood Social Security Office, Ed Kramer. Well, if you watch movies and television, you've seen today's guest a good many times. Now, I can say this without fear of contradiction because he has appeared in about 230 movies and about 200 television productions. You moviegoers who saw Guys and Dolls will recognize him as Abernathy. And if you saw the Universal International Picture, The Last Sunset, or well, you saw him with the Kirk Douglas and Rock Hudson. And here's how he appeared in a very early Western with Richard Arlen, and some 30 years and 200 movies later, well, here he is again with Richard Arlen. And now let's meet our guest in person, Regis Toomey. How are you, Ed? Regis, how did it feel to be working with Richard Arlen 30 years later? Well, it was pretty much the same Richard Arlen. Now, how that came about, Ed, we did a picture for uh, 20th Century Fox called Warlock. And while we were shooting, I was looking for something, and I came across this old still from the Light of Western Stars, a picture we made with Mary Bryan in 1930. And I brought it on the set to show it to him. And Frank Neal, a publicity man, said, let's shoot a picture now 30 years later. That's how this came about. I see. Well, how did it feel to be working with a man that you worked with some 30 years ago in, in a Western? Have you changed any, both of you? <laughs> well, uh, that's a pretty hard question to answer. Uh, Dick Arlen is remarkably uh, like he was 30 years ago. Uh, this picture uh, really doesn't do him justice. He's very youthful looking. Well, I expect uh, he would say the same thing about you, uh, Regis. Well, uh, uh, I don't know whether he could <laughs> truthfully, but I <laughs> wouldn't object. Well, speaking about the old times, uh, you have a number of distinctions. You were with Clara Bow as her leading man in her first talkie. How do you remember Clara Bow? Was she as glamorous as they say? Uh, well, that was the first talking picture Clara made. You're referring to Kick In. Well, she was a wonderful person, very fine talent. Of course, she was the biggest star of her time <coughs> in silent pictures just before the advent of talkies, and it was a great thrill for me to be playing opposite her in a picture because she'd been one of my great favorites before I ever came into Hollywood. Weren't, uh, didn't you say that she was sort of apprehensive about doing this talking? Ed, I've never felt apprehensive about anything in the theater, oddly enough. Uh, I'd met Clara. I knew her fairly well before we started to shoot. Uh, it meant a great deal to her uh, because this was her first talking picture, and I know she was scared to death, mm -hmm. as were all the other big silent pictures who made this change. I was apprehensive for her. Well, you had another distinction, too. You played in the first gangster talkie, a picture called Alibi. And uh, I, I think you have a scene that you play that sort of uh, cast you for quite a number of movies then on. Do you remember what that scene was? Well, you're talking about the, uh, the long death scene in Alibi. Mm -hmm. Alibi was the first all-talking melodrama, and it was the forerunner of all the gangster pictures. I played a young cop, Danny McGann of the Homicide Squad, and I got killed. And this started me <clears throat> on a long career of uh, dying. I was an actor who was known to die very well. <laughs> well, TV Guy said this was the longest and corniest death scene ever played. Is this true? I didn't get that. Uh, the TV Guide said that this scene was the corniest and longest death scene in the movie's history. Well, I don't think that's quite true. Um, at that time, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm quite sure today, if it were on the screen today, it would be considered very corny and much too long. I see. But in those days, we had the set music, and we had, uh, we, we really lived these things and believed in them. And uh, at that time, well, the answer to your question is that that got me off to a pretty good start, that scene. <laughs> What, uh, how did you get out of this dying routine uh, and into other parts? Well, I got tired of being typed uh, as a dying actor. I, I don't mean to say that every picture that came up uh, was a picture in which I was killed, but there were a lot of them. And uh, the death scenes were getting closer to the beginning of the picture, mm -hmm. meaning the parts weren't so long. And I, I hired a new agent, and I told him I didn't want to do any more death scenes. And uh, the first real important part that uh, came up was a picture with C.B. DeMille. And when I went down to be interviewed by him, he told me that, of course, 
about halfway through the picture, Anthony Quinn would kill me. And I said, Mr. DeMille, this is <laughs> something I don't want to do anymore. And he looked at me uh, as much as to say, well, don't, you don't mean you're going to turn me down. But he didn't say anything. And I said, but for you, I'll do it. Of course, anybody would work for Mr. DeMille, the grand old man of motion pictures. So I didn't quite get away from the death scenes at that time, although I've done very few since. Yeah, it must have been quite a uh, traumatic experience going from silence to talkies for a great many of these old stars who were quite big in silence. Uh, you said they had a test called the Mississippi Test. What was that? Well, this was a rather tragic uh, uh, episode that I was witness to when I first came to Hollywood. Uh, through a lot of these silent picture stars who had been tremendous names all over the world, and a lot of them with uh, stage background. Mm -hmm. Many of these people had been big stars in New York. But they had to know how they would sound. So they had uh, microphones set up, and they'd bring these people in. They, they weren't in the picture that I was in, but they, they, they were, I guess, willing to come in mm -hmm. to find out whether or not their voice would record. And they'd give them this word, Mississippi to see if they'd get a whistle, if the siblings came out whistles, uh, which was an almost impossible word. And uh, I felt rather badly about that. And I remember I talked to one of the technicians. I said, how often does the word Mississippi come up in a picture? But I didn't get any place. <laughs> it was a rather, tra a rather tragic thing for a lot of these people because a great deal was at stake. What do you think about Social Security as a test? What do I think well, about Social Security? As a voice test in terms of, uh, in terms of Social Mississippi. <laughs> That could very easily be troublesome. Does it ever bother you? Yes, as a matter of fact, I've been having trouble <laughs> for quite a number of years now. And speaking about Social Security, we have a film, Regis, that we'd like to show our viewers. So let's take a minute off. Uh -huh. Each of these men is 65 years old. Each is getting Social Security retirement payments. Jim Roberts here works part-time. He earns about $1,300 a year and gets a Social Security check nearly every month. Bill Jones works eight months a year and earns about $4,000 for the year. He gets a Social Security check for each of the four months in which he does not work. Frank Williams works full time, earns about $2,700 a year, and gets some Social Security benefits at the end of each year. The exact amount depends on his monthly benefit and his earnings for the year. If you are 65 or over, and have not applied for Social Security benefits because you are still working. Take this advice from Jim, Bill, and Frank. Write, phone, or visit your Social Security office soon. You, too, may be eligible. Before we won the air, Regis Toomey said that he had only recently heard that a person could earn over $1,200 a year and still get some of his Social Security benefits. Well, we know that many people don't know this, that you can earn over $1,200 during a year and still get some of your Social Security benefits. Well, let me show you what I mean. In cities and towns all over the country, Social Security people are worried. They know there are a million people over age 65 in all walks of life who haven't filed for their Social Security benefits. Now, if you're 65 or over and still working, and you're earning over $1,200 a year, you can get some retirement benefits under certain conditions. Now, here are, the, here's, here are the conditions. If you have low earnings during the year, you can get some of your Social Security benefits. For example, if you're single and earning $2,000 a year, you can still receive some of your Social Security payments. If you're a married couple and the husband is working, he can earn as much as $3,500 a year and still get some of his Social Security payments. And for those who work as employees, well, they can earn any amount of money, four, five, six, or even $7,000 or more. And for any month in which they have wages of $100 a month or less, or don't work in that particular month, they can receive a Social Security benefit. And the self-employed person, too, regardless of his net profit during the year, for any month in which he doesn't operate his business or work at his business, he can also receive a Social Security payment. And then at age 72, the month in which a person reaches age 72, that person can receive Social Security benefits for the rest of his life, regardless of his earnings. Now, we'd like to recommend some suggestions. One is that you inquire before you retire to find out exactly what your Social Security benefit rate is, under what conditions you would be paid it, 
and how you can draw your Social Security payments. And then when you're 62, well, check with your Social Security office because you might be out of a job, your health might be poor, your financial situation might be in such a, such a situation that you might want to consider filing for reduced benefits either as a man or a woman worker. And then even though you're working at past age 65, we recommend you contact your Social Security office because you might want to file your claim for a number of reasons. One, even though you may not get any Social Security payments, by filing your claim and taking care of the, of the paperwork, by getting your proofs in, the month in which you do retire, the month in which you can qualify for a benefit, the check will come to you without any delay. But more than that, by filing at age 65, you might find out that benefits are payable under the conditions I told you about just a little bit earlier. And so we have a slogan. We'd like to recommend to all those who are past 65, well, don't delay. Check today and find out about retirement, Social Security benefits, and under what conditions you can receive them if you're earning over $1,200 a year. And one of the things you can do today is ask for our two little booklets, 21 questions and answers about Social Security payments for working people past 62 years of age. And 23C, you don't have to retire completely to get Social Security benefits. Well, now to get these two booklets, 23A and 23C, well, please write to us here at this program, and we'll see to it you get these booklets for free. And, of course, if you have any questions, well, please write to us. We'll try to answer them for you. Well, Regis, I've got these two little booklets, and I'm going to hand them to you because I think everyone ought to find out about these Social Security payments. Thank you, Ed. I guess it's been your time for me to get out and check. Well, we think you ought to start checking. <laughs> <laughs> Regis, uh... Looks like you got a little something. I was wondering, were you trying to prune a bush or something? Oh, you mean uh, I got up early this morning, Ed, and uh, I did a very stupid thing. I went out to prune a pyracantha bush, and I got hung up on a thorn. I forgot about the thorns. I see. So don't forget about thorns if you're ever mucking <laughs> a pyracantha bush. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't have a green thumb. I'd like to ask a little bit about your personal life, uh, Regis, as to what you do with your time. I understand that you have a very interesting hobby. Well, I have, I, I've had several hobbies. I notice you're a pipe man. I've collected briar pipes for many years. Uh, I have a couple of dogs. I have a Kerry Blue Terrier and a little poodle that mm -hmm. uh, I'm very fond of. They take a lot of my time. And uh, I do a little writing. Uh, I correspond with uh, several people on tapes. I have a little tape recorder. And I don't know, I seem to keep busy, Ed. I don't have any one, uh, I guess pipe collecting was the closest thing I ever had to a hobby. At one time I had about 200 of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've given a lot of them away. I still smoke a pipe. Well, Regis, I'm sorry, but our time is uh, just about up. I want to thank you very much for coming on our program. I certainly enjoyed you so many, many years and so many, many fun. movies. And I know we're going to see you for many, many more years to come. And I understand you might even have a new series on television coming out. And I'd like to remind everyone to check on their Social Security by seeing their Social Security office soon. Social Security in Action is produced by the Social Security Administration and brought to you as a public service by this station.